Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a follow along back bend video together so you guys can work on your back bend as well. I have been consistently, and by consistently, I mean at least four days a week, working on my back bend forever. Like I'm talking at least two years. I don't have excellent spinal flexibility because it wasn't something that I developed as a kid, which just means it's going to take a little bit longer for me to develop as an adult. But it's all good. I have 80 more years of life, so I have lots of times to get my back bend, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop training it. One of my goals has been able to back bend and touch my fingers to my heels, and I've been this close, this close for the last like six months, like ugh, almost there. But something happened, and that is I decided to revamp my training for the last three weeks to focus mostly on handstands. That means my back bends, my middle splits, my muscle ups, my handstand push-ups all have taken a back seat over the past couple of weeks just so that I can improve on some of my other goals. But as soon as I'm done this phase and my handstands have improved, then I'm gonna go back to my regular training. I just wanted to change it up and try something different. But that means that today in this video, I did not hit my goal. I was so hoping that today by filming this, that would be the first time that my fingers would touch my heels. But having taken a break from it, the last time I trained my back bend was March 16th. It is now the second week of April. I didn't unfortunately get that close, but that is okay because clearly I know that if I consistently train it, I will improve. It's just taking a little bit of a back burner while I work on my handstands, but we'll get back to it. So even though I didn't achieve my goal in this video, I still wanted to share it with you. And I 100% know that I will achieve my goal within the next couple of months if I keep consistently training. And so will you, if you set goals for yourself and you work on them consistently. Anyways, let's get started. Put on your own fave music and follow along and do this a couple of times a week if you wanna see significant improvement. Um, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to help me make more videos for you. I wanna know which videos you like, so please leave me a comment if you enjoyed this and if you enjoyed seeing Boba, kinda of blends with the coach, in this video. Have a good one, guys. Bye. For this workout, you'll need a yoga mat and a foam roller and a wall. If you don't have a foam roller, a rolled up blanket will do. I'll meet you on the mat and we'll start doing some spinal waves while also warming up our hips. Most of the counts in this workout are gonna be for six to eight reps. We're gonna warm up our wrists here. And then I'll meet you on our stomachs for our first scapular warm up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And big arm circles, eight either way. Now Y's to W. One, two, three, four, five, six. Leg lifts, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Chest lifts, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Next, we'll bring ourselves to a downward dog and then we will wave forward to our upward dog and push back up, trying to get a big wave in our spines. When you come back up, lead with your butt and then try and wave down to your shoulders. And same thing on the way down. Always trying to create this nice segmentation in the spine, trying to train it to move independently instead of as big blocks.
Now I'll meet you on our stomachs for lifts for eight. Now this next one is a bit tricky to set up. If you don't have a foam roller, just roll up a blanket and just copy what I'm doing in this video here. Next, we're gonna perform toe touches so that we teach our spines to elongate because we wanna elongate before we curve. One, two, three, four, five, six. And now up and back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. On this one, we are going to hold, continuing trying to pull our thoracic spine off of that foam roller, and then we're gonna lift our feet off the wall as much as we can, and it might be a very small movement. And come back up. Readjust that foam roller so it's up a bit higher, so we work a different portion of our back. And here I decided to grab a jar to help with lifting up and back. You could also grab a yoga block or something or nothing. But we're going to do the same thing, trying to pull our spine over that foam roller. We bend up and then back and try and pull our chest off. And on this last one, we're gonna hold. We're gonna keep our hands in contact with that ground and pull each foot off of the wall for a total of 10. Now both feet, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now come out of this mindfully controlling your spine. You don't want to be a loose noodle when you come out. And then just move around in a way that feels good to your body. I just wanted to do some more cat-cow, some spinal waves, some side-to-side, -side, whatever your body needs in this moment. Okay, now we're gonna to come to standing. We're gonna to go to, from a squat to a flat back. Two. Three, four, five, six. Okay, are you ready for our first back bend of the day? We're gonna push up, we're gonna drive through our hips, through our feet, and through our shoulders. Bring your heels to the ground. And now we're gonna rock the weight into our shoulders. Do this at your own pace. We're trying to transfer the weight to those shoulders, straighten those arms, push through those heels, extend those hips. Find a still position for a second. Push up, getting nice and tall. Come on, you can do this. Breathe into your belly and come down with control. Awesome, we've done our first back bend. I like to do a little counter action here. Up to you if you wanna do this as well, but it's what feels good for me. I'm trying to elongate my spine when my feet come close to the ground. I'm always lifting my spine up and then curving. Pause the video if you need, take a little rest, and then I'll meet you for our next back bend. When we come up, we push through our hips, push through our shoulders. We're trying to evenly distribute the weight. Now I want you to walk your feet as close to each other as you can. We're trying to straighten those legs, get the weight 
over our wrists, pushing through our shoulders and remembering to breathe into our bellies. Feel free to bend and straighten here, we, but we really are trying to straighten those legs and get comfortable in this movement. Drive your shoulders to the wall behind you while also lifting and push. Come on, you can do this. Only a couple more seconds and come down with control. Awesome. Do some little twists and whatever you need to do here. Twisting always feels good to me. Next up are some little baby glute bridges because we want our hips to be an extension when we're doing a bridge. So here we're squeezing our glutes together and we're training this movement pattern before we go back up into our bridge. Okay, take a deep breath and then we'll go back to our bridge once again. Remember, we're gonna extend our hips. Our hands can be slightly internally rotated if it helps. Feel free to play with different distances of your hands. Some of you may like them a little bit more open. Some may like your hands a little bit closed. We're gonna bring our feet together again and extend our legs, pushing our chest over our wrist and extending everything to the ceiling. Everything's engaged. Our lower back is squeezing. Our glutes are squeezing and we're breathing into our stomachs. We're trying to teach our body that it's okay to be in this position. Keep holding. You got this. Extend. Can you lock out those knees? Can you breathe deeply into your stomach? Now calm down. Let's take a little rest. You're doing so good. Now we're gonna do the opposing stretch. And here I want you to think about lifting, extending your spine, and then curving it. So I'm not collapsing here. I'm bringing my spine up higher all the way from the base of my neck, and then I'm curving over. So lift, curve, should feel a really nice stretch and you should breathe deeply into your stomach. Accept the sensations that are going on in your body as long as they are pain-free. Teach your body it is okay and natural to be here by breathing. Now if you're anything like me you might be feeling a little bit exhausted here so spend some time just chilling out, drink some water, have some fun, wiggle in whatever way your body needs, and then meet me on the ground once again. This next bridge, I've set myself up near a wall, and I'm doing that so I can help my body get my chest over my wrist, and then push my spine up taller, because I need both of those actions to ha happen, and the wall helps me to remember to push my chest forward. And so we're gonna hold at our top position here, remembering to breathe and try and find peace in this position and straighten those legs. Remember to breathe. Can you walk your feet a little bit closer? Is your weight evenly distributed between your hands and your feet? And now slowly come down and we'll go on to the next exercise. Take your time coming out of these bridges. Do whatever you feel like your body needs. And we'll go into a little bit more of some spinal waves here. And then we're gonna work on our hip extension. So we're not bending our back here, but we're actually driving that hip forward. We're trying to basically pull that back knee to our back hip. We're pulling those two together. So when I'm coming up, you can see I'm kind of crunching that in. And then I'm going to perform a hold. And then we're going to go to the other side. Same thing. Drive that knee and that heel together. And don't rely on your lower back. We're trying to take the bend out of the lower back and instead work on our hips. Okay, that should have helped out our hips a little bit. Let's shake it out again. And then of course, go into a bridge. 
<laughs> Time for another bridge. First extending my hips, then I'm gonna ground through my feet, my hands, and then I'm gonna push up. I'm trying to evenly distribute the weight throughout my whole spine instead of collapsing just into my low back. I really wanna make this even. Find your stillness, find your extension, driving up and then drop your heels. Keep your heels on the ground as much as possible. Can you walk your heel in a little bit closer and then breathe? Then walk in the other one. Take these little baby steps closer to you while breathing. Don't force it. Keep those heels down. You got this. Breathe through your stomach. Open your chest and drive everything up towards the ceiling. You got this. I know it's a lot. Can you get a little bit closer? Come on, I know everything is telling you to come down. And now let's do it. With strength and control, come down unraveling your spine. Next up, we are gonna come to standing and then do a very low squat position where we're opening up our knees and we're trying to flatten our backs. Yours might not be as low as mine and that's fine. We're trying to extend that spine. Extend, find, lengthen it. You don't have to grab your toes. I was just doing that. But can you see how my spine is getting longer in this? That is what we want to work towards. Now I'm just doing a little bit of chest opening and opening up my scap a little bit more. Doing what feels right for me. Getting some nice double chin action here. <laughs> Next up, grab your foam roller or your rolled up blanket and place it under your ribs. We're gonna do more back activation drills here. We're gonna try and peel our chest off of the foam roller by squeezing our back and squeezing our scaps together. Doing a little hold at the top to really engage. Trying to peel off that foam roller, get up taller, come on. And done. Now we only have two more bridges left in the series today. And here I'm doing a nice little puppy pose just to incorporate a passive stretch. Relax a little bit after so much activation. Okay, back into our bridge. Push up. And now I tried something different. Instead, I was putting the weight on one hand and then on the other. Just alternating there, keeping my heels down and trying to breathe into my stomach. Pushing out tall, locking those arms. And just alternating from side to side. Play around in your bridge. See if you can get a bit closer. See if you can find more room within your spine by extending and then curving. Shift the weight around. You can even try picking up a foot. See if that helps you at all. Just experiment and breathe and try and enjoy this process. I know it's fairly difficult. It's definitely difficult for me. and come back down, slow with control. Now take a little rest, and then we'll go into our last bridge of the day. Okay, last bridge of the day. I was hoping this would be my best bridge, but I had a dog in the way, and he made it very difficult. <laughs> I find it easier for myself to walk my feet closer to my hands rather than my hands closer to my feet. But in this practice, I tried to experiment a bit so that I could encourage you to also experiment and find what helps you get the most space in your spine. We're pulling everything up to the ceiling, 
pulling our chest over our wrists. Come on, you got this. Keep breathing deep. Try not to hold your breath. Keep the weight between your hands and your feet. Keep it even. Can you find a little more height? Can you bend a bit more? Could you inch one heel closer and then the other? Okay. Coming out of our bridge. And that is it for today. Now I want you to take some time to really cool down and relax before you jump into your next part of your day. Do some stretches that feel really good to you and just relax. That's it, we're done. I hope you've enjoyed that and engaged your muscles. Please take as much time as you need to cool down. This can be difficult for your nervous system, so make sure that you've actually taken some time to cool down in the way that your body needs. Listen to your body, stretch out the things you want, and just chill before you go about your day. Please like or comment if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.